Oh, it's a black screen right now. Hang on, I'll get there. Let me get the intro going. There it goes. On my phone. Yay. Hey, there we go. Thanks for telling me. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Chris Dolly. Welcome to Breaking the Fourth Wall. Uh, we are here on a little special one. That, that, that was a goofy-ass shot. I just look over on the computer, and I see me smiling <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah, that, that was my we bad. Are, we are live on Twitch TV for a special Q&A. It's cute that I have the little uh, Jedi symbol next to my name on a red lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, joining me That's as always is my Jedi logo. is my partner in crime. He is my Tarkin to my Vader, my Thrawn to my Paleon. He is my Jar Jar to bad movie puns, Aww. Mr. Mr. Brian Miller. How is it going, everybody? It's been a while since we've got to do anything like this, man. It's awesome to actually be doing a break in the fourth wall and actually a live stream too, man. This is. This is really cool. We're we're actually getting somewhere. We're going places, bud. Hey, wait a minute. I get a whole I get a whole background of of uh, breaking uh breaking the fourth wall and you get a little tiny square for Star Wars Canon Library. That's all you had too, bud. Is it? Yeah. I don't know. I was I was mesmerized by my award-winning smile. <laughs> is that what it was? That's what it was. So, this is a Q&A. Um we're hoping to get some uh, some streamers here ready to go and uh watch and see what we're doing. And join in, but while we are, let's talk some talk. Uh, excuse Whoa, me, we were, we, were lovely, talking a, <laughs> we were talking a lot of uh, stuff last week, or actually this past weekend, uh, about Star Wars, about Batman v Superman, and basically the, the Justice League, and, and where it fits with like Teen Titans and stuff of that nature. Ugh. Which, by the way, I looked it up, and Teen Titans is supposed to be on Amazon Prime. Oh, that ain't going to do well. Yeah, so that that doesn't even help help it in any way, shape, or form either. Because no. doesn't Amazon Prime cost like a hundred dollars to even join? Uh, something like that. Uh, I, look with the Amazon Prime thing. I remember a while back, and this is years ago. Um, I was a big fan of the movie Zombieland that came out, and okay. Zom and Zombieland decided that instead of a sequel, they were going to do a TV show that was an Amazon Prime exclusive. So I got Amazon Prime just so I could watch this Zombieland show. And it was the same characters but different actors, you know, stuff like that. And uh, I watched the first episode and I really, really liked it, actually. I was kind of surprised. It was really good, dare I say. But then they pulled it instantly because nobody watched it. So I can tell you right now the same thing is going to happen to Teen Titans if they put it on Amazon Prime. Okay. Well, I definitely, I could definitely see that and I could definitely agree with you on that. Um. I don't know shit about Zombieland. I, I never watched it. I never cared to. Um, the funny the funny thing about it is that, to me, it's like you're taking a lot of daring chances, and I get it, okay? You know, I mean, the, the Star Trek's Discovery was a lot of chances on CBS All Access. You know what I mean? It, it, it launched their server, which... Let's face it, their server was garbage anyway because the only thing on there to, to watch was Star Trek STD, and it wasn't even good. <laughs> if they're hoping this is going to attract, you know, clientele to Amazon Prime's uh, streaming chat service, yeah. Well, I thought I thought the Teen Titans thing was going to be on the that DC streaming service. Cause last I, know, I last I read today because I was looking it up because I got asked who or yesterday like I got asked. Uh, who 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 was going to be streaming it and, and and what I found under IMDb was uh, Amazon Prime. Okay, okay, fair enough. But maybe because they haven't gotten the information for the the DC stream service, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But here's the question: Is Teen Titans going to exist in the Arrow universe? Is it going to exist in the uh, DC EU? Is it going to exist in its own thing? Where where is it going to fit? I hope it doesn't exist at all. <laughs> just to be just to be completely look, uh, it's gonna happen. Whether I know. We want it, 
I know, know. it's like know. it's like eight years of Obama. It happened whether we wanted it to or not. Yeah, I know. And, and look, and with Teen Titans, like I thought for a second, like when they first announced it, I was like, okay, now this could be actually really cool, right? And then you started showing me the the production photos of like them behind the scenes, and I'm just like, oh Jesus, this is gonna be a hot mess. And then the trailer came out like two weeks ago, was it at Comic Con? Right. And I hadn't watched it yet, and then you were like. You need to watch it. it you're going to hate it. And as soon as this happens, you're going to know what I'm talking about. I'm like, is it that bad? And you're like, oh, it's that bad. You're going to know the second it derails. And then when Robin's like, fuck Batman, I'm like, well, nope. This isn't, this isn't, this isn't what I, what, th no, this is, what the fuck? No, what the hell? So, and all I've seen online so far is just this like stupid backlash on the entire, like I honest to God would not even be surprised if Warner Brothers just like scraps the whole fucking project. I, I think they should. I, I absolutely think they should. Um, but at the, at the same indifference, I don't think they're going to because it, it definitely fits their narrative. Hey, I see we have two viewers. Guys, welcome to the stream. This is a live Q&A. So if you have any questions in any form of entertainment, doesn't matter, music, movies, whatever. Star Wars. At Star Wars, especially <laughs> Star Wars. Maybe even some Star Trek. We got to talk about Captain Jean-Luc Picard returning. Yeah, we do, man. I, I, I've completely forgot that that was even in the news. Yeah, we do have to talk about that. So, I mean, anything you want to talk about, man, just pop it up on the chat. We have the chat up live. We will answer it right here and now. And if we don't know, we'll make it up as we go along. <laughs> that's how what we normally do anyway. So that's how Indiana Jones does it. That's how Indiana Jones does it. <laughs> hey, it works for CNN. It works for us. <laughs> that's right. I'm on fire tonight. I'm going to kick it off. You know what? While we don't have a whole lot of viewers, let's talk, let's talk about what we just started talking about. It is a little political, but fuck it, we're live. Who cares? It's not going on radio cast. <laughs> to my knowledge, it's not going on radio cast. <laughs> Donald Trump's star on the walk of Hollywood Walk of Fame. West Hollywood's council is taking a vote on whether or not to not replace Donald Trump's star. After it was vandalized by some cuck who was just disappointed that his mother didn't lo love him enough, his daddy was the mailman, and, uh, well, you know, he didn't get his way in the election time. <laughs> Do you think Hollywood should have the right or ability to block an achievement that a man had gained long before he was president and deemed a misogynist and a, and a sexist and everything else? Or do you think this is the right decision to maybe take a step towards peace? I, uh, look, this whole thing, it's, the, the here's, here's the problem, right? I'm listening. So, this, this goes deeper than what even a lot of people really, I guess, are registering. The left has decided to destroy property, <laughs> materialistic things. To th thinking that they're going to get to the man and piss him off by destroying his Hollywood star. I can tell you right now, Donald Trump doesn't give two shits about his fucking Hollywood star. He does not fucking care about that thing at all. It just, he's like, oh, whatever, don't care. Nothing faces the man. Nothing. You don't like him, he doesn't take it personally. He doesn't give a shit. Even if you want him to take it personally, he just lets it roll off his back. That's the thing, right? So, I don't think it even really matters. You know, and and I don't think it'd be a step. I don't think vandalism is a step towards peace. Um, I just, it's bullshit that it happened. That's destruction of public property. The guy needs to, you know, have the proper punishment for vandalizing public property. I agree. And as far as them not replacing it, uh, Donald Trump doesn't own it. If Donald Trump owned it, it would be on him to replace it. The city owns it. They can do whatever the hell they want to with it. Them not replacing it is a form of freedom of speech. You know? So if they, they have every right to do that. Kind of like when you go back to, um, what was it? Uh, Sarah Sanders. When she was uh, ran out of that restaurant because they didn't want to serve her, right? Mm -hmm. as, much, as much as that pissed conservatives off, she, they, that restaurant had every right. What was it? Like the Red Hen was the name of it? That yeah. restaurant had every right to do that. It's no different than when that bakery in like Washington State or something like that didn't want to make the the wedding cake for the gay couple. It's but no there's different. A, it's the exact there's same the thing. There's the problem. 
But there's the problem. That that's the problem that a lot of people are having. Uh, with the with the Donald Trump with the Donald Trump star, a lot of people are pissed off that they want to get rid of Donald Trump star because he the way he treated women or because they don't agree with his policies and stuff of that nature. But Bill Cosby still has a star. Yeah, exactly. Ke- Kevin Spacey still have a star, and he, you know Harvey Weinstein still has a star, as far as I know, still has a star. You know, and these people are proven misogynists, proven sex offenders, proven you know. Whatever the case may be, we sweep that under the curtain. Uh, curtain, carpet. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Sarah Huckabee, when she was kicked out of, uh, or Sarah Sanders, mm-hmm. uh, when she was kicked out of the uh, the, the the Red Inn, the Red Hand Inn, or whatever yeah. it was called, she went. She they shamed her out of a restaurant for being conservative. It's yes, it is exactly like when the uh, the the Christian baker didn't want to make a, a a wedding cake for a gay couple. But right. the difference is, is the gay couple got a court order forcing that bakery mm-hmm. to have to bake them a cake. See which nobody is, yeah no. nobody got the nobody stood up for the conservative who got kicked out of a restaurant trying to have a quiet dinner with her family. Yeah, well, no, see, and it, it, it's. The court order thing is bullshit. That that that's bullshit. This whole thing with the star getting destroyed, and and these court orders, it's just children acting out. That's all it is. It's children, spoiled children, not getting their way. They're rebelling. You and I both went through that rebel stage growing up. I guarantee, I because I can look at you and tell you went through it. I know I went through it. I there still were, do. I know there were times when I was a teenager where I told my dad that I fucking hated him. I told my mother I fucking hated her. I would leave for days at a time, come home drunk off my ass. And that, you know, I was 16. You know, I, I went through that rebelling stage. So last week. So like last week. Yeah. God, that was half my life ago. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Welcome to old age. Yeah, I know, right? So, but it's just children acting out. Like, and, and you keep waiting for these children to grow up. And realize that, wow, I'm being an idiot, you know? And these people doing this hashtag walk away thing, I think they're the ones that are growing up going, oh, shit, you know, we've been assholes, you know? Shit, they've been right all this time, you know? And, and they, they're they starting to come around. It's just some people are so hell-bent on just – like right now, the only platform the Democrats have is hate Trump. That's all they have. They have no nothing to back it up. They have no policies that they can stand on. They have nothing. Literally, this whole blue wave that's going to happen is all hate for Trump. That's all it is. That's all they have. Oh, if you hate Trump, vote for us. Yeah. You know, that, that's all they've got. And it's just, like I said, it's just children acting out, you know. And and when, you get, when you're a kid and you get a slap on the hand and that's it, you do it again. You don't give a shit, you know. I mean, if... It's just no, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I agree with you. And again, I want to I want to just reiterate, we're not saying that, you know, if you if you're a liberal or or left-leaning person watching this stream right now, we're not telling you you're wrong. We're not telling you that you should, you know, be a conservative. We're not saying that you should be right-wing. We're not saying that you should be stand with Trump if you don't like Trump or or didn't like Trump. What we're saying is is the hypocrisy and double standards yeah. is wrong. And the actions that have been taken by some of the extreme, majority of the extreme of the left, is wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is not the way you win an argument. This is how you start wars and make a division that has been going on in this country worse. That's the God's honest truth. Yeah. You know, uh, Donald Trump, whether you like him or not, earn that freaking star on the Walk of Fame. Let him have his little star. It's not hurting you to be there. If hell, if anything, look at it. This, here's a bright side to it: you get to walk on Donald Trump every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get to. Eat. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to put it. You, you know what it I really mean? Is. Like, you know, why, why, did, and and why would we applaud? Uh, civil discord is one thing, but why would we applaud piss poor behavior? Yeah, you know. Um, I, I, I serious. I never thought I would live in like a Demolition Man sequel, and that's. <laughs> That's literally what it feels like anymore, you know, is is just the world is so fucked up with that stuff. But that's off topic of, of entertainment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you you went there, bud. I went to talk about the you, stars. Yeah, I, know, I, I, did, I didn't expect us to go full political. <laughs> um, but uh, 
that did that br did bring up another point that I was going to make. Oh, long train, short track. <laughs> oh, derail, derail. Uh, see, I was, yeah, we could talk about we could talk about. Uh, let, let's let's move on to Star Trek. Let's let's give the uh, the surprise that was given to us this past week. Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart. Excuse me, I got to give him his mm -hmm. due. Uh, Sir Patrick Stewart, who was mostly famous for playing uh, Captain Ahab in Moby Dick. And a little independent show called Star Trek The Next Generation. Played some minor role as Captain Jean-Luc Picard or some... some The most British uh, Frenchman ever on screen. And made an announcement that he is returning... To Star Trek on CBS All Access. Mm -hmm. From what I gather, and I don't have a whole lot of information. From what I gather, it's going to be twenty years set, twenty years past Star Trek Nemesis, which was the last movie of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Right. So we're not looking at Captain Jean Luc Picard. We're looking at Admiral. We're probably looking at Admiral Jean Luc Picard, and it's going since it's twenty years in the future. Apparently, he's going to be not the same as he was when he was commanding the Enterprise. What that means, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you? I know. I know we're more Star Wars on these shows than Star Trek, but mm -hmm. the the next generation was a pretty big deal. It was, yeah. You know what I mean? And it, if anything in Star Trek help close the divide between Star Wars and Star Trek fans, I think Next Generation was really it. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, what did you think and how do you feel about the return of Jean-Luc Picard? Alright, so... We, we gotta talk timelines for a second. What okay. timeline? Is this in the Kelvin timeline? Or is this set back in the original timeline? Like, pre-Spot going back and doing the reboot? Like, when is this set? Well, see, that's that's the thing about Star Trek that's so freaking confusing and, and frustrating. Uh, even the uh, even the Star Trek Discovery takes place in the Prime timeline. Okay. The only one that takes place in the Kelvin, as they call it, timeline is the rebooted movies. Okay, so the films are the only thing in the Kelvin timeline. Right, and that so doesn't that, talking... that's not the that's not to say by the time they're done the Kelvin timeline movies, they don't find a way of having it twist back into, into the, prime the prime timeline. Okay, so this is literally a sequel to Nemesis. So this is before Spock went back, back in, time. in time. Right. Jesus. You think this timeline's fucked up? Look at X-Men. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Stuart or McAvoy. Stuart or McAvoy. The storylines <laughs> are so confusing. <laughs> so, uh, new Star Trek series. I've always been a Star Wars guy, but... Star Trek is cool in its own way. I'm not one of those people that's gonna, oh, you hate Star Trek, or you like Star Trek. I can't be friends with you. Like, I, I I'm not one of those people. I, I like Star Trek, not as much as Star Wars, obviously, but they, they both have a place in my heart. Um, but I just, I feel like this is, I feel like this is a cry. No, I don't want to cry. I, I, a desperate attempt to try to win some Star or Star, some Star Trek fans back after the Star Trek Discovery series because I know that pissed a lot of people off after the old uh, after the new films came off I know that pissed a lot of Trekkies off oh shit can I say Trekkies is that derogatory I, I think care. that's derogatory a Trekker is the right term right okay so I don't give a shit I, I know <laughs> thanks fanboys <laughs> thanks for making me question life choices um so <laughs> I'm gonna go with Trekkers just so you know uh so I know that pissed a lot of Trekkers off uh, you know, rebooting everything that they knew and loved. You know, I knew they didn't like Enterprise, and and I knew the new films. I knew some people were like, "Oh, the new films are great." It's kind of like Star Wars now, just not to that extreme, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think this is look to put it in a in, in a in a an equivalent to Star Wars. This would be like Lucasfilm coming out saying, "Hey, we're gonna make an EU movie. We're gonna make a movie based off one of the EU novels. Has nothing to do with any of the other stuff or the new canon." But this is just for you guys. I feel like this new series is going to be just for the old school Star Wars fans. Or Star Trek fans, sorry. That just, they hate the new stuff. And they don't like Star Trek Discovery. And they want something 
that's familiar that they can kind of grasp back onto and, you know, something that they can continue the timeline that they grew up with. You know what I mean? So well, is that a, te- is that a terrible it thing? No, it's not it such was- a terrible thing. I mean, it's great. We're getting Jean-Luc Picard back, which I was always one that was like, yeah, dude, Picard over Kirk any fucking day. Like no, any fucking day. No, I know. No, I knew you were going to fucking no, say that. No. Picard over Kirk any fucking day, dude. Um, no, no, just, no. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Dude, even the Enterprise and even the Enterprise the next right generation now, was. Everybody watching right now, this is the generation gap. This is where Generation <laughs> X fucked up with my generation. Just saying. Anyway, continue. Generation, generation, <laughs> generation what, what X you? is the one that created the next generation. I, well, that's the true next generation too. show. That's true. Well, that should tell you something. You should like. Prepare my better. parents watched the original Star Trek. So did mine. Fucker, I, I watched battle. the original Star Trek. Well, so did I. But I'm saying when and it was I, on TV. Well, yeah, I can't say that. But I watched reruns and I watched yeah, all the too. films and I still like Picard over Kirk. <laughs> Well, see, that that's the thing. Like, I'm a Star Wars fan over Star Trek any day of the week. Mm-hmm. I like the movies, but really, to me, the separation for the two was, like, Star Wars was movies. And again, the generation thing, like you said, back when I was a kid, there was no Star Wars on TV. Right. So, but there was Star Trek. So I got my, I got my, uh, my, my fix of uh, science fiction on TV at home every day from Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, Trekkies... The Force don't give a fuck about your feelings. Oh, shit. <laughs> Han Solo is a douchebag. Somebody needs to tell Kylo that. <laughs> yeah, somebody God does. Cinnamon. But no, the, 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 quest, the question being is, is, for a franchise, is that a terrible thing? Like, no. that, they can turn around, that they can turn around and admit, like, okay, some of our fan base didn't like Discovery. Some of our fan base didn't like Michael Burnham or 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 the uh, the timeline that we took in uh, for for this franchise. Even though we are getting a season two of SCD, um, you know, it's not my fault. That's the initials of the fucking show. I, I okay. know, I know, but the fact that that's what you call it. Every time I hear it, I can't help but crack up. You're just like, because I remember the day you decided to do that, and you're like, God, I might as well just call it STD because that's what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but uh, the fact that it's like, well, what did our fans love? Well, they love Picard. And one of the things that majorly a lot of the Star Trek fans did say was, why are we going back to this shit? Why couldn't we step forward and see what happened after uh, Next Generation, after Voyager, after D Space Nine, which they were all during the same timeline, right. you know, uh, or same time frame. Right. Why can't we know what happened afterwards? So it's like, okay, you want that? Here's Jean Luc, twenty years into the future. Mm-hmm. That it just seems to me like it made made Paramount and CBS uh, turn around and say, you know what? Let's give the fans what they want. Well, which which Enterprise are we going to be up to now? Because the last time we saw the Enterprise and Nemesis, it was what the E. Yeah, it was still the Enterprise okay, E. So... But twenty years and twenty years yeah, past Nemesis. So you're probably two enterprises in. So F G you might be on G or H. You know if what I mean? Enterprise <laughs> if Enterprise isn't isn't if. uh mothballed and we have just some other ship. We could have I don't, uh, what look, what was the name what was the name of uh 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 Picard's first ship before he got the Enterprise? Was it the Stargazer oh, or the Pegasus? I don't remember you would ask me that. But you never know. It might be, might be like he's 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 flying Pegasus too. For, which I know I'm getting shot. Was it star? Probably. I know. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm I know I'm mixing like Kirk and Picard because I think both of them had a ship previous, and one of them was the Pegasus, and one of them was the Stargazer. Whatever one was the right one to which character, I don't know. But you know. Um, now I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch all the TV shows and all the Star Trek movies, which are on Netflix. You know, you know what would really make me feel better if Disney bought Star Trek. Give it time. I know. Give it like <laughs> four or five years, and we're gonna have new Star Trek film. We're gonna get that's gonna piss the Trekkers off. Get a, instead of a pseudo reboot, we're gonna get a hard reboot. <laughs> I just saw lightning. A hard oh, reboot. Shit. A hard a hard reboot would be fine, but uh. I'm fine with the Kelvin timeline. I, I'm going to catch a lot of flack. For yeah, this. you are, because I already, I already see where that's going. Uh, I'm fine with it. You know what? I was a person just like everybody else. I was like, you know, I don't really like this Star Trek. You know, the the JJ's reboot, uh, the, the lens flares, which, by the way, I still hate the fucking lens flares. Mm-hmm. Um, Discovery the, didn't uh, have them so much. No, not so much, but no. it's still, it's, 
still felt too futuristic since it's supposed to be taking place around the same time as the original trilogy. Right. Um, but, uh, but you know, the, the lens flares, the, the, I didn't care for the cast. I, I did care for Chris Pine as, as Kirk. Even from Gate, I thought Chris Pine was perfect for Kirk. Right. And, uh, oh my God, uh, Judge Dredd, uh, Keith, Keith Urban, Ka- Kyle Keith Urban. Keith Urban, Carl Urban. Carl, Carl. I, I knew it began with a K. Which, uh, Carl. for the record, Carl Urban is being eyeballed for a new Wolverine character. No. Yep. No. Yep. Sorry, Chris. No, I mean, it has to happen. I guess he's a decent enough actor. I just I don't see it after. I know. You I, know. I already dealt with my grief. You can deal with yours. Go ahead and let it out. You're good. I, I won't deal with it until Wolverine okay. addresses it. Starting yeah, Wolverine. Until right. until Deadpool addresses it. <laughs> Deadpool has to address it. When Deadpool accepts him, I'll accept him. <laughs> You know, but uh, no. What I was like, like, Carl Urban as a doc, I thought he was perfect. I didn't care. For, I still don't care for Ahura. Mm-hmm. Ahura was definitely a strong female character in the original show, but she wasn't that character in the Star Trek movies. Mm-hmm. Uh it took me a while to warm up to Zachary Quinto as uh, as Spock. And quite honestly, I won't lie, it took the death of Leonard Nimoy to really more respect Zachary Quinto as Spock. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but he, he did grow on me. And pretty much the cast did grow on me. I love uh, What's-His-Face as Scotty. Oh, Simon Pegg? Simon Pegg is, Simon oh Pegg my God. Scotty is perfect. Fucking love yeah. oh my Simon God. Pegg as Scotty. You know, um... I, I've made peace with it. I don't care for the Kelvin timeline itself, but the, the the movies themselves to me have been entertaining. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I when, thought, when, what was when the I say in the darkness, when I say in the darkness is uh, is Wrath of Khan quality. No, no, of course not. No. But to me, to me, like the rebooted trilogy is kind of like at best Revenge of the Sith. Uh... I don't know. I had a lot of fun with Beyond. I thought Star Trek Beyond was pretty good. Um, Because I don't think J.J. directed that, actually, did he? It was... uh, No, that was primarily Simon Pegg. No, it was uh, was one of the directors from one of the Fast and Furious movies directed Beyond. Right, John Woo or something like that. Yeah, that's it. Um, But but Simon Pegg was one of the writers of it. Right, right. The the only problem I had with Beyond was that I felt like that female alien character that they had in it was a ripoff of (laughs) Rey. And Star Wars. As she lived in a down starship. She was a scavenger. She had a staff that she carried with her everywhere. Like, it just, it felt like a total and blatant ripoff of Rey. And I think that had something to do with Simon Pegg. But anyway, uh, no, I, you know, the I, I thought Beyond was the best out of those three films, personally. Uh, you know, and, and one of the moments that was the greatest was at the end when uh, Spock is going through the old Spock stuff. And he's got the photo of the, of the old, original crew yeah and as soon as i saw i got I, like i'm getting I, i'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it yeah and it was it was it was pretty cool seeing that again you know and then spock seeing you know wow that was that was what happened in that timeline you know and everything turned out okay there and all this stuff you know it was it was kind of a nice little nod to show that it is all in the same universe even though it's different timelines you know well that's why that's but, why i wonder that's why i wonder if they're going to uh fi- figure out a way of twisting the Kelvin timeline mm-hmm. back into uh, the the prime timeline where this shit existed in an alternate universe, but it's still some catalyst brings them back together to, for, for lack of a better point, uh, per, a point, like back to Star Trek, the motion picture. Mm-hmm. Well, see, well, there was an episode of Next Generation, and I don't, I, I think it was the very last episode, actually. Of when all the Enterprises from the different realities started appearing. Oh, yeah, and then we had Captain Riker flying yeah. the Enterprise D with the third fucking... Yeah. Yeah. Who's yeah. to say that one of those Enterprises wasn't from the Kelvin timeline? True. You know, that I mean, is true. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, you know, the far future of the Kelvin timeline, it, odds are, you know, obviously that shit wasn't written then. But, I mean, would, I mean it'd be kind of cool if you ever get a, a Kelvin film that far into the future where... All of a sudden, you know, the Enterprise gets slipped into an alternate universe, and it's the last episode of Next Generation, and you're like, you know, like, well, like you, well, who's to say, who's to say, 
who's to say it hasn't been written? I mean, guys watching, uh, leave a comment down below on YouTube or, or here if you're watching on stream. Let us know in the stream. Um, Star Trek has just as many freaking books as the EU did. Yeah, but the problem it, is they never they never considered any of – I mean, it's just like Star Wars. They never considered any of those novels canon to Star Trek. It was only the shows and the films. That was the only thing that was canon with Star Trek. No, you're you're right, but yeah. there 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 were some books that tied in directly with some of the stories. Like I remember one of the first Star Trek books I ever read. I don't remember the title of it, but it was literally five years uh, before the the events of Star Trek: The Motion Picture. Mm -hmm. So it was literally like right in between the time where the five year mission ended from the original series. Kirk becomes an admiral, right? And it's before he takes command of the Enterprise again while it's going through its refit to, to handle the V'ger situation of the motion picture. Mm -hmm. So technically that fits within the canon story arc. Yeah. Even though it may or may not be, you know, uh, canon. The point being is who's to say they didn't write some sort of alternate timeline uh, stories that could be considered Kelvin I mean, I've read books on Star Trek where it took place in the Mirror Universe. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The same... uh, Dark Mirror. Wasn't that the name of it? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I remember reading some of the old Star Trek novels. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, even Next Generation. And, and there was one that was really weird because it had all the captains together. Yeah. You know, except for uh, except for uh, Jonathan Archer. It had it had Janeway and, and Picard and mm -hmm. Kirk all living in the same universe, but they were in the mirror universe trying to fight uh, Emperor Tiberius, which mm -hmm. is Kirk's doppelganger. Right. You know, and stuff. It was really fucking weird. But, I mean, they could do all that shit, so who's to say they can't figure out a way that they haven't already written that something that could fit the Kelvin timeline to bring Star Trek back to its main focal point? It's it's a it's it's a lot to to deal with. It is. It is. You know how, that'd be such an undertaking. That would be like look. That would be the equivalent of nowadays trying to take the Disney Star Wars canon and the old EU and somehow still making them all make sense together. Can you like? Because I've read all the new canon. I've read some of the old EU. There's no goddamn way in hell you can pull that shit off unless you start doing alternate reality shit. You know what I mean? Like. That's right. literally the only way you can do it. So I just that that kind of undertaking would, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree completely. And uh, but you know, kudos to them. I mean, the, the 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 long and the short of it is, this is something that I think needed to happen for the Star Trek franchise. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we needed to go back to a familiar character. Um, especially while we're waiting for Star Trek for the Kelvin timeline to come out, uh, which, it, it, as far as I understand, it is in pre-production. Are we? I didn't even know if we were getting one. We are. We are. Okay, I didn't know. We are. Um, I, don't I keep believe up on it like I do my Star Wars stuff. I believe it's in pre-production for whatever that's worth, mm -hmm. like the scripts being written out. Oh well, I mean, pre-production doesn't mean shit. I mean, look at the Crow reboot; it's been pre-production for six years look the crow you know, reboot like, is not happening no it's never gonna happen dude it's just and you know what i i i, I now you're gonna start me on a rant <laughs> let 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 let's get it out there yeah, let's say okay. it right oh, now God, here we go do not reboot the fucking crow that falls along the lines of the original jaws close encounters of a third kind the Star Wars saga. You do not fucking touch it. But don't you know that in Hollywood, nothing is sacred? Don't you know that nothing I don't give up? Nothing is a sacred. Star Wars isn't sacred, bud. I mean, we all think it is. But I guarantee you, somewhere in my lifetime, not necessarily yours, but somewhere in my lifetime, yeah, I'm I wish going... You could, oh, you could. You can I, see I, me I right know, now. I know. Hang on. Hey. No, honestly, uh, <laughs> somewhere in my in my lifetime, I'm, I, I've am i come to terms with it. I'm going to see a hard reboot of Star Wars at some point. It's going to happen. They can't keep this, this canon stuff going forever. As much as I <coughs> sit here and defend it, they're not going to keep it going forever. They're going to reboot Star Wars at some point. In my lifetime, and the day that ha the day that comes, I'm gonna ask Kirsty to pull the fucking plug because I don't want to be here for it anymore. And it's it's just 
It's going to happen, man. It, nothing is sacred in Hollywood. You're going to see a Jaws reboot someday. You're going to see a Crow reboot someday. You're going to see Back to the Future be fucking rebooted someday. I mean, nothing is fucking sacred, man. <laughs> nothing. But, I mean, the fact the fact of the matter is, and I, I don't want to see any of these classics. But, see, that's the thing. That's the classics. To me, to me, rebooting Star Trek, or, or excuse me, uh, Star Wars A New Hope, or, or The Crow, or the original Jaws, is like rebooting Gone with the Wind. Mm -hmm. The original Wizard of Oz. You just don't fucking, you can, you can spin off all you want, but you don't touch the original. They were too perfect. Mm -hmm. Brandon Lee was the fucking Crow. Yeah. Now, of course, we got Crow, City of Angels, warmly received. We had Star Trek, uh, Sal or yes, Star Trek with the Star Trek, <laughs> uh, Crow Salvation, which was poorly received. Then we had Wicked Prayer, which was just god awful. <laughs> um, you know, but that's not to say you can't have Jason Momoa as the Crow in another movie. Not the, it, just not the Crow. Make it the Crow uh, Dead Time. That that's one of the Crow uh, comic series that was on for a while. Make it the Crow Dead Time. Right. Or something of that nature. It doesn't have to be Eric Draven in Detroit, you know, taking on Top Dollar and Tin Tin and 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 uh, T Bird and Fun Boy and the, everybody from the original comic, which was already expertly uh, uh, represented on film through Brendan uh, Brendan Lee. Mm -hmm. Leave that film alone. Yeah. Well, I mean, also the fact that Brandon Lee died during the production, you know. I mean, that's one that you kind of have to leave alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least I feel like you'd have to leave it alone. It's not going to happen. I'm still, I still say it. it's, it's going to get a reboot someday. It, is it going to be a good reboot? Not necessarily, but it's going to be a reboot. I mean, fuck. Well, look, if they, if they, they remade fucking Ghostbusters. If Ghostbusters isn't fucking sacred, what the fuck is? Yes, but let that be a lesson. Yeah. How well received was the reboot of Ghostbusters? How not good well. was the reboot? How good was the reboot of okay, Ghostbusters? Look, 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 look. When it comes to Ghostbusters, I have a different opinion than some. No, don't get me wrong. It was not the original. It was not good either. I, I laughed. I laughed during it. No, I, I don't like Melissa McCarthy that much. I really don't. But I You laughed at the running wonton joke? No, I didn't laugh at that. No. I just some of the stuff though, some of the physical comedy I laughed at. You know, I, the like, I couldn't the help pussification it. of uh, uh, I Chris Helmsworth. I didn't that. Mm, no, no. The fact that they made him an idiot kind of pissed me off because Janine was never an idiot. Janine was always like, "Oh, you have? Oh my! Oh yeah, they'll be very discreet. We got one! Boom! You know, like I that, quit better jobs than this. I, qu <laughs> <laughs> I also Ghostbusters. Like what do you want? I also like racquetball. Do you have any hobbies? I collect spores full. Uh, what was it? Spores, molds, spores, and molds fungus. And fungus. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you don't, man. The original Ghostbusters always has a place in my heart. Always, it's there. And, and when I was a kid, I never got the jokes. And then when I grew up, and I was like, that ghost is blowing him. Oh my god! <laughs> like it finally <laughs> dawned on me, and I'm like, so. <laughs> <laughs> the original Ghostbusters will always have a special place in my heart, man. I just I can't help it. It will. I, well, here here bring here brings you bring up a great question. I don't think we ever touched on on breaking the fourth wall at all. Speaking of the Ghostbusters, we know call it what it was. Answer the call. Mm -hmm. Ghostbusters answer the call was a complete and utter failure. Mm -hmm. Where do you go with the franchise from here? Do you let Sleeping Dogs lie, or do you try again? And do we try with? The female cast, or do we go back to maybe the idea of the Ghostbusters next generation? I see when they first started talking about. Okay, look, you know the video game that came out back in like two thousand and ish. Yeah, something. The and one, it was, the one that was actually written by uh, Dan yeah, Aykroyd. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Though that game is considered a continuation of Ghostbusters two. It's actually the okay. next part in the story. That's that's actual like canon, right? I mean, I say canon a lot nowadays. But no, that's actually part of canon, the Ghostbusters original canon. Um, and they kind of teased at the end of that that they were doing this Ghostbusters international thing. They were going to open a branch in Los Angeles and they were going to open a branch in Chicago and, and in Texas, you know, and all this other stuff. They started talking that your character, the rookie, was going to be the one to go out and kind of start it all. So 
this new Ghostbusters, they had an end credit scene with the female cast. They had an end credit scene that kind of teased Zool. Right. And I was like, please, God, don't do Zool again. Don't ever fucking touch my Zool. Okay. But don't don't fucking do it. That mother... Nimble mint fuckers. little mix, isn't no, she? No, yeah, fucking... I get the flat top. That's my generation, not yours. But anyway. <laughs> so... So, uh... <laughs> when they said that, my first thought was, okay, well, they're going to make another one, and it was going to touch more along the lines of, uh, you know, the original Ghostbusters. They were going to find, like, a female Rick Moranis character or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, it was going to be like that. That wanted to be a Ghostbuster, you know, and, and all this shit. I think if we were going to see a continuation of that Ghostbusters, it happened already. It would have happened by now. Uh, that was, what, two, three years ago? Something like that, something yeah. Like that. We would have we would have heard something about it by now. Plus, uh, Paul Feig, the director, was like all pissed off because it didn't do well. Um, the cast really burned some bridges with some people when they started bitching about how badly it did. Uh, but, because everybody was pointing out that yeah. it was uh, anybody who didn't like the film was misogynist yeah. or or sexist. Sexist, yeah. No, it it can't just be a bad film. No, no. You it, pick it the yeah. pick the worst people to play the roles, and yeah, they just did a horrible job. Yeah. And then you had yeah. the original cast come and uh, make cameos, Little, but like, not even yeah. cameos of themselves. Yeah. And then, like, uh, I never even figured out what, um, oh, God, Bill Murray's character was like, he had the biggest role out of all of them, out of the cameos. You know what I mean? Like, he just, yeah. it just, it didn't, I was like, why is Venkman dressed as this lawyer talking to these fucking bitches that are cosplaying? Like. Like yeah. I, I I don't get it. I, like it, and then the then he dies by going out of a fucking window. Like uh -huh. that's that's just you don't. The only way you kill Bill Murray is if he's pretending to be a fucking zombie. That's the only way you kill Bill Murray. And back to my zombie land, cause you know I fucking love zombie land. But anyway, I just if you're gonna redo Ghostbusters, don't do the hard reboot. You've still got the guys. You've got three of the four guys. Go back and make a continuation of the Ghostbusters video game. Where it's Ghostbusters International. You've got all these different... Because if you've got like four or five different branches across the country, you can make a movie on this one, then make a movie on this one, then make a movie on this one, and then bring them all the fuck together to do one giant-ass fucking, you know, ghosts attacking Earth, and then the old guy's got to come back out of retirement and fucking fight with him. Like, that's what I want to fucking see. I want to see Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and uh, fucking Ernie Hudson. I want to see them put the suits back on, you know, and like a... Oh, fuck. I was going to say something, but I don't know how well that'd go over. I was going to say a CG ghost of Egon. If they did it as a tribute. That, yeah, I don't think it'd go over very well. But anyway. It, but if they did it as a tribute, like I think that. it'd be okay. But yeah, yeah go ahead. I, I wouldn't mind seeing something like that, you know? That'd be badass to see them suit back up, you know? I mean, look, everybody lost their fucking minds when Harrison Ford came back as Han Solo. Everybody lost is losing their fucking minds now that Patrick Stewart's coming back as Jean-Luc Picard. Everybody would lose their shit if those three guys came back in Ghostbusters suits leading the new generation you know what i mean there was a you could probably look it up on youtube i don't know if it's still there or not there was a uh, uh an independent uh film group that did a spin-off of the ghostbusters that took place in denver colorado oh nice same universe same universe in fact one of the characters was supposed to be egon's nephew and he was <laughs> and egon was the one that got him started, started with the with 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 the branch off of Ghostbusters, that and it was three it was three dudes, and they had a really, really it was a while since I've seen it, but they had a really really solid storyline. I'm not saying hire them guys, but why couldn't we have the next generation be uh, Dan Aykroyd's son, you know, uh, 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 Ray's son, or or even Ernie's son? I mean, we we live in a world of diversity. Let's have let's have uh, 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 Winston Winston Zedmore Jr. Be yeah. the new leader of the Ghostbusters, right? And he gets the the, the franchise rights from the original three, mm -hmm. and then he puts together his whole new team out in California, Kansas, for, for Kansas, where, wherever wherever they want to put the new the new franchise branch, right? Take it out of New York, mm -hmm. so that way it doesn't get associated with the original, but yet you have the pa passing of the torch, if you will, yeah. From the original cast saying, you all guys are the new branch of the Ghostbusters. Yeah. No, that'd, that'd be great. I'd love to see something like that, you know? And it's... it's Look, I'm not shitting on the new Ghostbusters. I'm, I'm not shitting on it, like, as much as... I am. Some, I know you are. But I, it's not as bad I as am. some people... I Did I... <laughs> look, I'm not saying it was a good movie. I'm just saying I laughed. 
That's all I'm saying. And it's that's that's really all I can say about it. You know, I, I wish it would have been something different. It wasn't what I expected. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I'd rather see something like a sequel to the original. Of course, I'm a very nostalgic person. I like seeing sequels to original stuff instead of reboots. You know what I mean? Um, uh, I should say revivals. Uh, but it's, yeah, Star, I almost said Star Trek. Ghostbusters is one that you really can't. That was lightning in a bottle. Even Ghostbusters Two wasn't as good as the first Ghostbusters. You know, I mean, it was, I didn't hate it was, Ghostbusters. Well, I didn't either. It I know was still a lot of, good. A lot of people did. Yeah, it was still good, but it wasn't on par with the first one. You know, the first one, the the origin story was f fucking great. And technically, I guess the second one was kind of an origin story too, because they they gotten out of it for a while, and they were getting back into it. In yeah, five years one. later. Yeah, so I mean, it was it was kind of cool, you know. Well, I love I love the fact that like Ghostbusters two started off with uh, with basically real life getting in the way. Like they went and they saved the city. They stopped uh, Ghost they got of the Ghost sued. Area. Then the New York City sued them and put them out of business yeah. and put them under a gag order to not even talk about it. Yeah, that's that's exactly what would happen with something <laughs> like that too. That is exactly <laughs> what would fucking happen. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's <laughs> you got me wanting to watch Ghostbusters too. Now I'm gonna have to have a yeah, fucking marathon this weekend. I kind of want to watch the Ghostbusters yeah. now as well. Yeah, I kind of want to play the Ghostbusters game. I need to go back and find it again because I used to have it and then I sold it for another game. I think when back when I realized game before I realized GameStop was the devil. Um, but I just uh, GameStop's was, the devil. GameStop's the devil. Uh, but uh, <laughs> like no, camera it's, moving. Uh, kind of a little bit, uh, but uh, yeah. I just realized. I just realized my again. mouth. No, my. I, I just realized my mouth was covered by my name screen. Oh, I've been looking at that, bud. I just. I just realized. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. Are you, I'm an Antifa fighter. No! Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, wait! I can't be an Antifa fighter. I, I, I'm not in my mom's basement. <gasps> oh my God! Oh my God! That's right! I said it. You're a bunch of bitches. I don't give a fuck. Well, anyway, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Your feelings don't matter on this podcast. Oh my God! <laughs> Ghostbusters. The answer to call sucked. Fast and Furious is a franchise that should never existed. I will say it. Twilight is not a vampire film. Han shot first. Han shot first. <laughs> Kirk is better than Picard. Uh, mm, don't make me come to the screen, bud. Don't make me come to this fucking computer monitor. Han Solo is a douchebag. Uh, he, they said Han Solo's a bitch. Because uh, then he was like, and then he was like, nobody calls Han Solo a bitch and gets away with it. That's right. Why do I have yeah. douchebag in my head? He did say something about being a douche. I don't remember. It's been a minute since I watched it. <laughs> but anyway. And Jar Jar's going to be the greatest breakout character of all time. You watch. That guy's going to be the shit. That guy's going to be the shit. Don't well, get so excited. It's just my lucky R2. It's just my lucky R2. Oh my God. So what else did you have on the docket <laughs> for this live thing, man? Well, I expected by now we would have uh, questions on the live chat stream. But then again, the channel's new. Yeah. A lot of people don't know we're here yet. I did share it out, but yeah, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. Really, the reason I did this is because we originally had announced that we would be uh, here tonight to do Breaking the Fourth Wall. Mm -hmm. And then I realized the recording that we did on Saturday is going to be the one that debuts on our time slot on RadioCast. So we had no reason to record tonight, but we promised that we would stream tonight. Mm -hmm. So fuck it, here's an impromptu Q&A. <laughs> Promise kept. Promise kept. There we you go. You know what I mean? But even though even though this wasn't, uh, to, to coin Brian's phrase, this isn't canon to season four. <laughs> uh. <laughs> really, this is, this is uh, you know, guys, we've been kind of on the back burner for a while uh, as far as Realm of the Mist goes, you know, and, 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 and I can speak for my branch of it from the, for the Star Wars canon library and uh, the Star Wars canon podcast. I know, I know we've taken quite a bit of a break um recently that's that's mainly my fault that I, I have a lot to do with that for those of you that don't know i work at a grain elevator in kansas so uh once a year i have this big harvest time that's about a month long it starts in june uh and then i'm pretty balls to the wall after that so 
you know, I, I and then, you know, this year me and Kirsty bought the house and uh, I wasn't able to do a lot of stuff. But we're coming back September 1st with the Star Wars Canon podcast. So this is really, you know, I got a new house, new internet. We're testing out some stuff. I'm the one streaming this right now. So we're testing out some stuff. Uh, we wanted to do, you know, put some content out in the same at, at the same time in the process and and kind of see how things were going to roll. Uh, we got a lot of things lined up uh, for uh, Realm of the Mist. We're getting a lot of ducks in uh, in a row right now, so that when we come back, uh, we're we're going to be uh, really balls to the wall and and uh, hopefully we're going to well, be doing this right. Well, in fairness, we are back. Um, yeah. To, to the extent, not not fully back, but we are back where we have announced Star Wars Pan, Canon, uh, Canon Podcast for September. It's return officially in September. Mm -hmm. uh, Breaking the Fourth Wall is back, and it is going to be a weekly podcast right here on Twitch TV. It's also going to be on RadioCast FM for the audio. It's also going to be on uh, SoundCloud for your, your, your podcasting, audio podcasting pleasure. And, of course... It's going to be early released on Patreon at least two days before we release it on YouTube for our Patreon supporters. So, Breaking the Fourth Wall is officially back in Season 4. This just doesn't happen to be Season 2. And, of course, War of the Stars was the catalyst that brought us all back because we did do our first episode of the season for War of the Stars. Mm -hmm. The only thing about War of the Stars is uh, right now, because of uh, work and constraints and everything else, uh, War of the Stars will be a monthly podcast. Mm -hmm. So once every four weeks will will we be getting together to do War of the Stars. However, it's still going on. So, I mean, two out of the three main shows that are still a part of Realm of the Mist are either back or committed to come back. Mm -hmm. As far as the rest of the content and what we're going to do, like uh, it had to be said, if that's going to come back or not, uh, After Hours, if you and I are going to do that, which I think Breaking the Fourth Wall kind of took over the After Hours mm -hmm. idea. Um, whether or not uh, that Trans Geek Girl is coming back, or whatever. I don't know. That that's still that's still in discussions. That's still in talks. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not you'll see some of our other uh, on-air talents like Eric Batista or Christina Talley or any of that nature. Uh, again, we are in the talks of it. We should have an answer to you guys sometime this week. Knock wood. <laughs> you know where we get where we can actually release the schedule because all of the stuff. It's already been discussed by Brian and I. All of the stuff will be uh, streamed live here on Twitch. Yeah, we're doing that so you guys, the fans, our, our fan base, could actually come interact with us, real-time interact with us. Even when you're watching the show later on down the line, hey, i seen that. What's going on? Thanks for uh, sending out a uh, little chat. We're just doing a slight bit of a Q&A, but right now, since we had nobody asking any questions, we're just explaining the, uh, the, the season coming up for Realm of the Mist Entertainment. Um, so basically, the, 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 long, the long and the short of it is that we are looking at... Fuck, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, by the end of the week, we should have some idea of what else is going to be coming back what isn't going to be coming back, and all of it is going to be streamed live here on Twitch TV so you guys, the fans, can actually interact with us, talk with us. If you want to call us on our bullshit, oh, that's cool. <laughs> no problem, man. That's that's why I wanted to do it live. Live's fun. Um, you know, um, interact with us, call us out on our bullshit if we're wrong, uh, correct us if we're wrong, uh, you know, or or even give your two senses because one of the things I love the most about this this job, if you will, is hearing your guys' opinions about things that we talk about. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and really, you guys may give us insight that we didn't even think of when we give our opinions. So, you know, absolutely, I want all the shows to be open to that 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 realm of possibility to be able to, to talk with our fan base. You know, a, as we're performing, I think that's the greatest thing we could do. Mm -hmm. So... Follow, 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 guys, so you can join us in. Yeah. So did anyway. the flash just run past me? Do it I? Might have. <laughs> just got oh, asked. Jen. <laughs> yeah, Jen running in the background. Fair enough. <laughs> did the flash? Did the flash just run by me? <laughs> Fair enough. She was thrown out her dead battery. She she she's doing a Call of Duty marathon right now as we speak. Damn. Just until I get done, yeah. Then when I go on to uh, Order 69 with uh, the cocky cockpit, I'll well, be taking 
if taking over the Xbox. If you don't hear anything from them, I'm my listening. PlayStation's right there. <laughs> and my Battlefront is... Right there. Uh, right there. And... I got all the time down in the world tonight. Oh, oh, oh. I'm no, just or, saying. So Order 69. It's uh it's a thing that we were doing with the cocky cockpit. It's kind of a collaboration. Oh yeah, it's definitely something else. No, uh, Order 69 is a collaboration between uh, the cocky cockpit and Realm of the Mist Entertainment and and uh, our fan base, where we uh, every week we jump between Xbox One and PlayStation Four and play Battlefront Two for a couple hours with everybody. And uh, stream it for you guys. So, we we because a cocky cockpit, we decided to call it Order Sixty Nine. So, uh, <laughs> um, that is supposed to be done tonight. I'm waiting to hear from uh, Dave Frischkorn. But as you just heard, exclusive here. If I don't hear from Dave uh, here, probably in the next hour, you're probably gonna see Doc in a blue box and Wild High Seventy Seven suck. Just, at that front two. Just keep. Well, no, you're gonna see half of us suck. Um, I should say only the ones at camp. Only no. You know what? It's a legitimate strategy, bitch. Only uh, in Call of Duty. Let me tell you something, motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> no. Let, look, you give me so much shit about camping and video games, and I watched you do it on Call of Duty last night. It doesn't fucking matter. It's a double standard, bud. Um, but just so, as, just as so I you said, guys know, I only, take all of Chris's kills. Chris gets a lot of assists in Battlefront. I'll give him that. He is the assist king. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there too. But yeah, no, we're we're we we'll, can bust out Battlefront one, and I'll shut you up. <laughs> I no, I don't have Battlefront one installed oh. on my PlayStation. Oh, shame Battlefront on Battlefront two kind of took it over, but uh, yeah, no, seriously, you want to, you guys want to see, and, and and look, I'm gonna let you guys know right now the opinions and views of Wild High seventy seven are not reflected onto Realm of the Mist Entertainment. Oh my god. <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there first before we go anywhere. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to watch us, uh, <laughs> probably get our asses handed to us in some Battlefront 2. Uh, tune in here in a little bit. We might uh, keep an eye out. We might uh, we might be playing some Battlefront. He, 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 the whole entire, uh, I'll explain the whole entire reason he says the, uh, the, the views and opinions thing. Because when we're playing Battlefront 2, there's no cameras on us. It's literally just our voices and you're watching the game stream. And I swear to God, it's like this this boy just gets free with the mouth that at least five times in the stream I will be saying the views and opinions of uh, Doc in a Blue Box or Brian Miller is not the, necessarily the views of opinions of Wild <laughs> of uh, Realm of the Mist Entertainment, Perse Gaming, or any of his subsidiaries. It gets a little racy. <laughs> It does get a little racy. It's a little, but but it, I don't mean any of it. It's all out of good fun, you know. I'll, I'll cuss somebody out or call them a name, and I don't really mean it. It's just, it's all out of good fun. It's, it's all out, out of good, good fun. fun. Your your white your white sheets are back from the dry cleaners. Sorry, my white privilege is showing. <laughs> you got to tuck that in, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, that, that that that's where the joke comes from. But oh man, see. I gotta argue with you, man. I have to argue with you. In in Star Wars, the run and gun game of Star Wars, designed to be a run and gun game of Star Wars, it's camping. If it was in meant Call to be a Duty, run and gun, if it was meant to be a run and gun game, there wouldn't be such great sniping spots on a lot of maps. In Call of Duty, it's strategy. It's a legitimate strategy. No, in Call no. of Duty, it's a no. legitimate strategy. No, you're just pissy because look. A while back, you can go back on and his uh, on his uh, Twitch stream and find this. A while back, I was playing Battlefront and asked him if he wanted to play, and he's like, "I don't know, I got some other stuff to do." And then while I'm playing, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, you got to look at this. No, no, no. Do you have the, you have the chat up? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, you got to see what I seen that uh, just asked us. He asked us a question. What? Do you, what, what is it? Top ten favorite racial slurs. Mm. <laughs> Tune in tonight and find out. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> Uh, no, Chris decides he's going to uh, crash my game of Battlefront. He decides to drop in into my game, and he keeps saying, oh, let's just troll him. Let's see how long it is before he realizes I, that I'm in his game. So I'm playing, and Which he kills me. you didn't even me. realize I, like, killed you. No, he you. kills me, right? I die in the game, and I never even realized it was him. And then I think that was on Camino, and then I went to Jakku next. And I'm camping, like, up in the top of the map with a sniper rifle, just shooting 
motherfuckers as they're coming out. And all of a sudden, I see this one guy running in front of another, and I shoot, and I miss him, and I hit the guy standing there, kill him, and I adjust and get a headshot on him too, and it pops up and says, you killed Wild High 77. And I was like, huh? What? <laughs> when does that ever happen? When, what the fuck? When did he... What the... Oh, fuck no. He's in my fucking game, so I'm hitting the button to look at the fucking... <laughs> scoreboard and sure shit he's in my game and then I sniped him again and then I sniped him again and then I sniped him again and then he got pissy because then he was like oh you can't camp that's bullshit bet if we were on the same fucking team buddy you would have been so you were off sitting about up it. Dude, no up in Taku you were sitting up on that elevator shaft that whole entire fucking time like a bitch it's but a I agree with I seen that fucking strategy I agree with I seen that the only strategy is be 12 years old and high on Ritalin <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. You know what? If you don't hear from them, we're playing some fucking Battlefront. We're gonna settle this shit. We're <laughs> we're doing it, man. It's it's on. We're gonna uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. And then and then look, it's not even glitching. There's there's one spot on Star Killer Base where I've got a great sniping spot and he thinks I'm glitching into a fucking pipe. Head glitching. I'm not fucking head glitching. My rifle kinda goes through the pipe a little bit. You can still hit me through the motherfucker. I don't get why it's that big of a fucking deal. Do you see how thin my phone is? That's the space. That you have to see him from those pipes. That's been, head glitching. They've gotten headshots That's head on glitching. me through there. No, it's not. They've gotten headshots on me through there. Just because my rifle shines through it and my head's over here doesn't mean A Taco shit. Bell fart couldn't fit through that space. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Tune oh, in Jesus. tonight, guys. You know what? Here's the deal. If we play Battlefront, right? And since I'm testing my streaming capabilities anyway... Let's go ahead and do this. You guys can either tune into his stream and watch him get a shitload of assists, or you can tune into my stream and learn how it's fucking done. Yeah. So let's just. Let's well, just, wait just... a minute. Wait a minute. My stream is uh, Realm of the Mist. I closed down Wild High 77. Oh, you motherfucker. Well, then you can eh? tune in for my stream. It is Doc in a Blue Box. D O C I N A B L U E B O X. Yes, it's a Doctor Who reference. Doc in a blue box, all one word. So we'll we'll see. We'll, oh, I'm we'll so see. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, I agree. We'll see. You see, I seen that says, "Come on, guys, don't fight over Star Wars. <laughs> fight over fight over a real game like Snake on the on the Nokia phones." <laughs> I'm down with that. Let's do it. Yeah, but I, I, will, bust, I will bust you up in Brick Breaker, man. That was my <laughs> fucking generation, bud. <laughs> you were my age when that shit came out. Try me. <laughs> I wasn't that old. Fuck off. You know what? Let's end this stream. Let's 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 go ahead and settle this like fucking men. <laughs> Furiously masturbate? I'll be your Huckleberry. Let's do this shit. <laughs> let's, let's settle this like grown men. Furiously masturbate? Oh, no. A game of hooky cookie. It Dude, is. This I, is, I, this I is accept way your challenge. Off. We derailed, bud. This, this fucking podcast isn't even what it was. <laughs> I will butter your fucking popcorn. Wow. Okay. Well, do you want to play some Battlefront? <laughs> yeah, we could give a couple minutes. So I yeah, get a drink, and we'll get it going. Me. Guys, if you enjoyed this video in any capacity, oh, I'm speaking to the guys on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video <laughs> in any capacity, hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check out all the other great uh, Let's Plays on Press A Gaming, as well as all the great podcasts of Realm of the Miss Entertainment. Here on Twitch TV, guys, thank you very much for hanging out with us. I hope you hit the follow button so you get... All the great content that does come from Realm of the Mist Entertainment right here on Realm of the Mist's uh, official twist, Twitch account. That twist. Twist. It, twist? It's a twist. Yeah, you expect him to be able to get kills in Battlefront and he can't even fucking talk. Da, 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 da. I even stutter with my thumbs. Okay, DJ. Brian, why don't you go ahead and tell them the, 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 the way you, the, 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 they can find you? <laughs> You guys can find me on YouTube at the Star Wars Canon Library. We go through, I'm getting ready to come back with the Star Wars Canon Podcast. Me and Christopher Stolle right here. Uh, we're going to be coming back September 1st with a vengeance. We're going to be talking all kinds of Star Wars news, upcoming canon, newly released canon. I just hit my desk and shook my camera like a bitch. We're going to be talking all things Star Wars comics, novels, TV shows, video games, movies. 
all of it. Uh, make sure to check out StarWarsCanonLibrary.com. I'm finally getting her up to date. Like I said, after the break I take every year, finally getting her up to date. You guys can follow me right here on Twitch uh, on the Realm of the Mist page. Also, you can also find my Twitch, Doc in a Blue Box, like I said earlier. Uh, and that's really about it. Keep your eye out for the Star Wars Canon Podcast coming back September 1st. And also, if you guys haven't already, make sure to like the Facebook page as well. It's just Star Wars Canon Library. It's easy to find. I think it's this logo right here anyway. Uh, make sure to check that out at the, uh, I think it's the last Saturday of every month we do. It is, we do a live Q and a where I just sit down on Facebook and answer all y'all's questions, give away a couple of canon novels, stuff like that. This month it's going to be on a Friday because it's the 31st. Uh, we're going to be doing that, uh, August 31st. So make sure to give us a like on the Facebook page, uh, and, and so, uh, make sure to follow it so that you know, whenever we, uh, put that event out, uh, it might even win some canon material. You never know. And don't forget, uh, like he said, September 1st, Star Wars Pan Canon Podcast comes back with its first episode, the top 10 Star Wars porn parodies. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. They're not canon, but, you know. Forced in the dark side. <laughs> See ya. Guys, thank you very oh much for hanging God. out with us. We will catch you again on the next Breaking the Fourth Wall, which will be next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Twitch TV. Guys, have a good one. Take it easy, guys. May the Force be with you. Always. Always. <laughs>